We're here with Calvert baseball coach Bucky Burgow as he gets ready for the season. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, you've played 12 games already, 10 in the Dome and then two last week in at Dickinson State. What's been the most impressive thing so far about this uh, team? Well, we were really unsure about our pitching staff coming into the season. And, boy, to date, they've really done a nice job. They kept us in every game. Um, in fact, we could probably have a couple more wins if, you know, we get a hit at the right time in the game, but that's baseball. But our, our pitching staff was really, especially after we lost Sean Kruger, who was supposed to be a number two guy in the rotation to uh, a basketball injury, uh, intramural basketball injury of our broken ankle. But um, So that has been impressive. And then we've had other injuries, too, to some really core people. And the young guys have stepped in and done really a good job. By young guys, I mean freshmen. And that's all been unheard of as far as our program here, baseball program at Concordia. It's always been a pretty much an upper class program, and I believe in that. But in this case, this year, those young guys have had to step in, and they've done really a nice job. Uh, go and go and look back at that. Uh, what's been the most impressive thing about uh, you know us offensively so far? What have you guys done real, really, really well? Um, you know, we've won, we've won a couple, I think three games where we were the visiting team uh, going into the top of the last inning tied, and we were able to score, go ahead, and, and win the game. So offensively, uh, in that scenario, with some clutch hitting, uh, some getting some bunts down, stealing the base, what have you, we've really done some good things again. And a lot of that, again, has been the young guys. Uh, so that's been a real impressive force. Plus, you know, uh, other than when we played in the Dome, we were four games, four games, and then we had a week and a half off and we went to Dickinson, and we out hit Dickinson in both games. We split, but we out hit them in both games. So we're still able to put a lot of hits on the board. And, we're now we're sitting a week and a half, almost two weeks again, and we're hoping the same thing happens. Let's talk a little bit about the return of the, the top returners you have coming back. Obviously, we're going to talk about Michael Olson uh, in the outfield, and then Braden Raymond in the infield, as well as Bryant Guler, uh, and then Jackson Mellon on the mound. What have those guys have done so well, far this season? Really good because from the oh, at the end of last season, then when we go into fall baseball, and then when fall baseball is over until the season starts, February one, the practice season starts. Those guys have been our leaders, and they're the guys. They're the guys that get the guys together and, and do some fun things as a team, that kind of thing. And uh, Michael Olson, just you know, before the injury happened for him this year, he's just a good, good baseball player. Braden Raymond, I really got to give him kudos. Uh, he's been our shortstop, and we decided to bump him over to uh, third this year to make way for Phil Kubal, freshman shortstop. And uh, Braden understood the move. He well, he took it in stride, and he's a great baseball player yet today, and he understood why it was being done, and he was on board with us. Sir Jackson Mellon is our leader on the mound. Uh, he's been a starter now uh, on the mound since his freshman year for us. He's ready to, to lead the pitching staff, and, and he's done done that. Brian Guler at first base he, last year, and these games to date, he yet has to make an error. <laughs> and the ball gets over there a lot, and he hasn't made an error, so now I probably jinx him. But, um, but he's really a good defensive player. He's been able this year to get uh, some hits that have really been important. Behind the plate, Jan Eric Lindbergh hasn't played an inning yet, <coughs> and a really good defensive catcher. And uh, I'm sure he's he's cleared to play now, and I'm sure he's chomping at the bit to, to get out there, and we'll see how that plays out. I know Jan wants to get out there, and we want to get him out there too. So. Those guys, those guys right there, um, we, we also lost a junior second baseman to intramural basketball. Here we go again, baby. Intramural basketball isn't being played by the baseball team next year, by the way. But we lost uh, Zach Hinkemeyer at second base, and we jumped Eric Heidemann from third over to second, and then we have a couple of freshmen over there with them, Ross Merriman, who's in our rotation, freshman, and Cody Raymond, another freshman. So. Uh, all in all, it's been a pretty good mix so far and uh, some good competition and the competition within our team is going to pick up even more now as we get those uh, regulars, upperclassmen back. Let's talk a little bit about this, this spring in particular. Have you seen anything like it where the snow is still you know, on, on the counter field? But not only that, but all across the league, nobody's been able to play up until this time. Well, you know how I think, Jim, and I'm really happy that it's all across the league because nobody's going <laughs> to jump on us because I worry about that forever. But, yeah, it's just been really unusual. Um, uh, 
And, you know, and there doesn't seem to be an end in sight right now. In fact, we're moving our home game that's supposed to be played against St. John's here tomorrow to St. John's on uh, on Sunday. So that's unusual. We don't like to move games away from our campus. and But uh, we need to start getting games because if we don't, we could be backed up three double headers and, and that would be that would be tough. And, I told my colleagues here just this morning, I sent out an email to all the baseball coaches. About every hour I check my TIA craft because a spring like this makes you want to retire in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Now as you go forward, you're, you know, you got to play St. John's on Saturday. you got to play St. Olaf on Sunday. Then you're going to come back and play St. Mary's. You know, it's supposed to play next week. What do you do as far as coaching-wise to prepare the teams because you don't get a lot of practice time? Yeah, well, um, we're doing no different than we do in February and the early part of March when we're practicing inside. We're trying to do the base, baseball things that happen in a game uh, inside. Uh, we have been able to get outside uh, two days this week on the turf because our physical plant did a heck of a job of, of taking it off the field for us. So we were able to get outside and practice ground balls, fly balls, pop-ups on a baseball field. And so that was really good. But we're trying to maintain and even get a little bit better. I see both Chris Coast and Nick Lewis uh, uh, still teaching and coaching the game. Uh, and that's really good. I really like to see that. They're teaching and coaching the game. So we're trying to make improvements. Like yesterday, uh, for example, Matt Zeboth couldn't get a bunt down to save his soul in the batting kit. So as soon as he got out of Chris took him aside and showed him how he was taught in the big leagues how to do it. There's no given way to bunt, but we're hoping that stuff like that can carry over and keep improving as, as the season goes along. Because it is a young baseball team that could really grow into something really, 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 really special uh, down the road. Lastly, it's your 30th year as you start uh, this 35. Season. 35. <laughs> you, look, you look a lot younger. 30, 35th year. Uh, what's changed between when you started and now? Well, the big thing is, I thought, I honestly thought, and this is one of the reasons I did, I honestly thought I was maybe, I think I have a pretty good relationship with the younger student-athlete at Concordia, all of them, not only the baseball player, but I thought I was losing touch a little bit with reality as far as the baseball guys were concerned. So this is the first year I've allowed long hair, and this is the first year I've allowed facial hair. However, I did tell the guys if it gets out of hand, I'm still the boss, I can change it up in a hurry if I want to. But all in all, I think uh, it was probably the right thing to do. And you know, I saw I see the Boston Red Sox guys running around with long hair and stuff like that. And um, I can remember when I was young, I liked to wear a little bit longer too. And some of the goatees those guys have are a little bit borderline and ridiculous, but I'll live with it. So uh, but that's one of them. But, I've really been pleased with this group. Um, and not every year does a coach get to have a group that is so co cohesive. Now, we hope that equates into a lot of Ws. But they're a good group of guys. They have fun together, and they have fun playing baseball. And they've really worked hard at the task of getting better at baseball. And that's been fun. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate it.